Hello everyone and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is November the 16th, 2023. How quickly this year is passing us by. My year of Judy will be over before we know it. Um, I have, I want to welcome everybody first and then tell you I already am frustrated with this because I thought I was videotaping and I look up and the screen is going dark. And why is that? Well, because silly me, I didn't change it from photo to video. How do you expect to get a video? <laughs> Don't click on video, Judy. Anyway, here we are again. I'm going to try once more. <laughs> Welcome all of you to my channel. I'm coming to you from Southwestern Ontario in Canada. And I like to share with you finished objects and work, works in progress if I remember to bring them down here. And I also like to share yarn. Um, I have a love of hand dyed yarn, so that is what I tend to show is hand dyed yarn, and I hope that you enjoy seeing what I have to offer. Um, if you do like what you see, please give me a thumbs up, and I absolutely love getting comments. Um, sometimes I ask you for things to comment on, but I love to hear um, what it is you have to say. And while I'm talking about that, I've had it in my mind to ask you for the last few weeks since the end of the year is drawing near and it's time when you kind of rethink what you're doing and what you want to do. Um, I would be very interested in knowing what things do I do that you would like to see more of? What kinds of things would you like to see me offer that Maybe I'm not offering him. Please don't ask me to do tutorials. I do not have the equipment or setup to do tutorials. I'm sorry to say. And maybe there's something I'm doing that you don't find the least bit interesting. But I really would like to hear um, what I I am doing that you that you think I'm doing right. And if I'm doing something wrong, I would really like to know that too. So today, it's going to be kind of a mix of things. I do have some yarn to show you, and I do have a little bit of FOs, and I want to talk about them. And then I have, uh, I've been asked a few questions in the past, and uh, I don't know if I completely addressed them, so I thought I would answer a couple of questions that have been asked of me in the past, and I've I've seen a few things, come across a few things that I wanted to share with you. So we're going to be all over the map on, on, this, on this one today. So first of all, um, let's do finished objects. And over here, I was in the middle of this when I realized I wasn't taping. Over here, I have a shawl. And you know how shawls seem to be what I enjoy the most. Um, this particular one, and I will lift it up in a minute, is made out of Scarfy Light. Can you see that? Scarfy Light. They do still make this, I was happy to see, but not in this color. And you'll see it better in a minute. The color is called Twilight. And it has 349 yards in a ball. And it is 43% acrylic. 41% um, polyester, 9% nylon, and 7% wool. And that's the part that bothers me because with the wool in it, my guess is we really shouldn't be donating it to a senior's home. Now, it does say that it is machine washable, but lay flat to dry. So I appreciate hearing your comments or, and experiences would you be donating this to a senior's residence or not? We are going to take it with us to the sale this weekend. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention what I had already said, that I am getting ready 
Um, it's been a busy week getting ready for the craft show that we're, I'm going to be at on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to digress for a minute. Um, the craft show is out of town. We have to go an hour to Sarnia, and that's where it's held on the outskirts of Sarnia. And I gather it's a fairly sizable one because they have well over 80 vendors. I don't know, it's 87 or 89, quite a number of vendors. That's a good size show. Um, but it means that Friday morning, tomorrow, I'll be busy packing up my car. And in the afternoon, we will head to Sarnia and do our setup. They don't really leave a lot of time for setup first thing in the morning. And being that I have to go an hour to get there, I'd be going before sunrise to get there and get ready. Um, they only allow ex just an hour and, you know, you just don't want to be pushed. So we're going tomorrow afternoon. We'll set it all up and then come home and still leave pretty early in the morning to uh, be there in time. And I'll tell you all about how it goes next week. We'll see. I have my fingers crossed that it's a good show. So back to my <laughs> what I was talking about. I made this shawl and now I'm going to turn it around and show you the back and you can see the colors and I didn't even complete the shawl it was plenty long enough but it had a lot more well this section at the bottom I did two rows it had four rows and then it went back and did three rows in here that were repeated three or four rows that were repeated and then it did another even fancier border so if you wanted a very big shawl it would be perfect but um i'm sorry to say that i went and looked on the site that my pattern said it was from and i couldn't find this pattern and the site was i'm guessing italian so there's no point my trying to link it in the bottom for you but you can see it has a variety of stitches it's quite fancy at the bottom. I really like the ruffly look of it. And I really, really liked the colors in it. Um, I would I would have bought more of this yarn and made something more if uh, there had been more. So that's, that's the shawl I made. And it's not an overly big one. It's not as... Well, it's almost my wingspan, so I guess that's a good size, but not really big. Anyway, and I have to tell you, if you can't tell, it's quite fuzzy. Very, very soft. I really, really like it. And I had, I've already made one shawl in the pink version. I showed it a while back, probably beginning of the fall. And I have this in three more colors. I really, really like working with this. So we'll put that back on her. And then when I finished making the shawl, there was leftovers and I went right to the very last little bit. Um, and I made two headbands. So this is the first one I made. You know, if I had made it even one stitch narrower, I would have had that little bit of extra because this one is a wee bit smaller and I put a band around it, a very tiny band. I would have liked to have made it a couple rows wider. So I, I'm telling you, I wove in the very end of it, there was nothing left and it was a tiny tail to weave in. So I made these two more headbands and I finished, this one was almost done last week. I finished it, made these two more. Now I am upstairs working on another headband. And if you remember last week, I was using the the scarfy red and black left over from a poncho I made a few weeks back, maybe a month ago now. And I had made one headband. I'm making another headband. And I'm going to spend only one more day making headbands. I'm taping this before Thursday because I knew it would be too busy at the end of the week. 
Um, I'm hoping to make one more headband and I will have to take a picture of it. I don't have it made and by the time I have it made, it'll be going to the craft show. But I found a little, um, another little, um, oh, what are they called? Beanie, beanie bit tots and it was a polar bear, but it had a red elf hat on it. His eyes, one was red, one was green, and he had red and green on his paws. And I'm going to make a lovey out of that. I think it'll make a very cute lovey, and I'll get that made before I go. So uh, probably a couple more headbands yet to go um, with me on the weekend. So that's, um, that's what I've been making this past week. And you're not up to date because I'm doing this very, very early in the week. So let's put that back there. So what were some things I wanted to tell you about? First of all, I want to show you a picture. I thought this was so cute. I often get asked um, two things I want to tell you about this. You know, you often, and I'm sure other crocheters too, wonder or get asked, what do you do with all your leftovers? Or right now, for me, you know what? I'm not going to worry about leftovers. I have enough yarn to keep me busy a couple of lifetimes, and I want to work with my beautiful yarn and not worry about leftovers unless I need one of them to help in another project. But the other major question is always, well, what do you do with all of those minis? And I'm going to show you some more minis today. What do you do with all those mini skeins? I mean, you got Advent coming up and you're going to have four sets of them. Not, never mind that I haven't touched the ones from last year. And you know what? I've come to the um, thinking, as a couple of people have said to me, they make a very good backdrop, so I think I'll just leave them there until some desire comes over me to use them for something, and then maybe I'll have another mini set I can set up there. Who knows? Maybe I'll get something this year to put up there. But what do you do with minis? Well, or leftovers, because they work a lot the same. So I have two things for you. First of all, I've been forgetting to mention, but Advent's drawing near, and I'm going to be showing lots of Advent, so this is the time to bring it up. I have, for those of you who have not realized, in my description box below, and I've had it there most of the fall, and you know what? I think I'm going to leave it there all the time. I have a link to a bundle in my Ravelry uh, page, um, they have a place where you can put favorite patterns. Well, I have made different categories, and one of them is mini skeins. So I have a link direct to that bundle of patterns you can use for mini skeins. And, you know, they're always adding to it. Um, I'm sure there'll be new patterns come out again this Christmas um, using... Advent calendar mini skeins. And some of them need the whole set. Some of them don't need it all. I picked patterns that don't even mention Advent. Um, they just look like patterns that use a lot of colors. I just had um, this past weekend a pattern come out from uh, Expression Fiber Arts that uses a gradient set now. Those aren't minis. I'm um, thinking maybe they are, they're DK weight, so they are what I would call a half skein. DK is half the size of fingering, and it uses five skeins of 210 or 220. So those would be like, if you want to do fingering, those would be like half skeins. So there's lots and lots of patterns out there, and I wanted you to know that I will always have that link there. You do not have to do the work of trying to find patterns to use up your scraps or to use up your mini skeins. I have it there for you. And I know there's, I don't know, 60, 70 different patterns there. I actually have one small one, I think with knit as well. I will go and look again. If I have a bundle with knit that uses uh, knitting patterns that use minis, I'll link it too, and I'll add more to it as I see them. 
The other thing, and I just want to show you this picture. I thought it was a really cute way to use up scraps or minis. Great decoration for the holidays. So I'm going to split the screen with this picture I came across. Isn't that just the cutest Christmas tree you've ever seen? And for those of you that like to make granny squares, you could make any squares. Uh, you could use any dimension. You could use any granny square pattern. You could do corner to corner squares. You could do all kinds of things and put them together like as this picture and have a great decoration for Christmas or make a great present. Take it to somebody who's in a, a senior's home and set it up in their room for them. Uh, somebody that might be sick for the holidays or somebody that lives in a very small place and can't put up a tree. They don't have the space. It'd be good in my place. I don't put up a tree because of my cat. So, um, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was cute. So let's move on. The next, um, one of the things I've been asked about in the past um, has to do with caking my yarn. Somebody asked me, what kind of Swift do you use? And I simply said, an Amish Swift and left it at that. <coughs> well, they're easy enough to find. There are different swifts. The other kind of swift that you see predominantly is what I call the umbrella swift. <coughs> but the umbrella swift also has to be clamped onto a table. I have an itchy nose. I think it's some fuzz blowing around in the room, tickling my nose. Um, I really don't have a good setup for clamping two things. Um, to wind my cake. So I'm again going to insert, I have a couple of pictures. I'm going to insert first my Swift. That is an Amish Swift and I love it because it sits on a, a little wooden, what we used to call tray table and it sits in the corner and I pull it out when I need it. And when I need to put it away, it's very, very easy. It fits into a flat box. The two, the pegs come out in a little bag then the two crossbars come out and they sit flat together like this, go in the box. And then the other two cross pieces at the bottom simply lift apart and they go in the box. Simple as can be. And it puts together in two minutes and it takes apart in two minutes. And then next I'm showing you a picture of my uh, ball winder. Now I had... Um, what was it? I think I had a Stanwood ball, wimer, ball winder to start with. And it was the type that had, um, they all have a feed onto the center core where you put your center pull to get it started. But the one I had had another metal arm that went back and forth and back and forth as you were winding. It just went back and forth. It was very heavy and it was hard to store because it's awkward size, and it was too big to leave sitting out like this one is sitting. That sits there all the time. It's not in the way. It That wooden unit is beside my dining room table and doesn't bother me in the least. It's small and it's lightweight and it's plastic. Easy to move if I want to take it somewhere else, but it just sits there. But that stand wood was heavy, metal, and I found this arm going back and forth didn't always work the best. And my balls would often have the yarn falling off the sides. Now, it can happen in any, um, here's, here's a ball. It can happen in any skein that these, you know, they have, this has a loose strand that has come loose and they can unwind. And that's why I use the hair clips. I don't have them on every ball, but um, that's why I use the hair clips so they don't come unwound. But that particular winder, um, whoops, wrong place. That particular winder, when you were winding the ball, this is wound in my new one, the yarns would crisscross here. They wouldn't stay on the side. 
they'd be winding back and forth over the top, making an awful mess. I just didn't like it. So I went out and bought a new one. This one I'm showing you, it's plastic. It's lightweight, does not have that extra arm going back and forth. What it has is a centerpiece twirls and it leans different ways. And by leaning different ways on the, as it twirls, it causes the ball to wind the way it does, like this one. And you can't see the side because I covered it up with the label. I like it way better. If it ever breaks and I have to get a new one, I would get the same one, but I think I would get the one that Knit Picks puts out. It's purple. Um, I have a feeling the bottom of it is a little more encased. Mine sometimes gets the yarn trapped at the bottom. Um, not often, but every now and then. So that's what I use to wind my, my cakes of yarn, all of them are those two items. Put this away. Now, another question I've had is, and I just had this last week, was about my poncho. So I didn't mention this poncho that I'm wearing. I'm going to mention it now. This is a poncho that I will be taking to the craft show this weekend, and it is multicolored. And it is made from one of my cotton cakes. I think this one is a Hobie Twister. It has more colors in it than some of them. Some of them just go from one color gradated to a second and in between it might be white or creamy. Uh, a lot of them are two or three colors and you can see this has many more. It had more navy but it didn't have quite enough to go around another whole time. And um, this was getting long enough. It's a little longer than I usually make. Now I have the poncho from last week here as well. And I wanna tell you that I didn't, I didn't um, add on to it. I just decided it was long enough and I didn't have the time. I had other things I wanted to make. And I don't know if I mentioned, but it is sparkly. Can you see that? Um, sparkles aren't, oh, there you see some sparkles in it. It is sparkly. Now, what I wanna, I'm going to first, before I get busy with these, I'm gonna flash up a picture, move this over. I'm going to flash up a picture sharing the screen of the two ponchos on the dress forms in the other room. And hopefully you can see the difference, but you can also see what I am going to talk about. First is this has a very small neckline. This has a much bigger neckline. Most of the ponchos I make, not all, but most of them, when I make ones that go around, you know, in a circle, I make other ponchos that are two rectangles. I've talked about that a lot in the past. When they go around, I often just make them freehand. Now, this one, I did use a pattern because you can see if I get up close that it has like the granny cluster here. It has just the open lace. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then it has V stitches. And finally, and in between, of course, it's just double crochet. And then I have the open lace. I probably followed a pattern and then decided, okay, enough of that. And I'll just finish it the way I want to. But this one is totally a freehand one. And I think this week you can see with the white behind it a little better. There is one row of lace couple rows of lace. It's just open stitch, nothing special. Another row, another row, and I double row there, and I stopped. I could have put more in, but I was asked how I make them. Uh, this is no big secret. I'm sure you can find lots of them on uh, Ravelry and YouTube. In fact, um, if you check out Wilma Westenberg, she makes something very similar to my basic. I think she always puts a row of um, posts 
front post, back post, whichever. But I will explain a couple of items in making this. First of all, you gotta decide how big you want the neck. And it has to be an even number because you're gonna fold it in half. So you need the same on both sides. If you are doing something like this, there are other things to take in count. Like these are every third, and I don't know, these are every third. But if you just wanna put some plain rows of open work in it, then what I do is pick a multiple of two that when you divide it in half gives you an odd number. So if I were making the, the neckline, let's say 100, 100 stitches divided in half is 50, it won't work. Pick a number like 110. When you divide it in half, you have 55 on each side. Make sure I'm talking, right? Yes. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. 55 on either side. Yeah, it will work. Um, you need 55 stitches for this half and 55 for that half. And what that allows you to do, uh, I'm thinking, though, I'm wrong. It's the opposite. You want... 50 on either half, you take off one for the center and you have 49 left. That's, that's the way it has to be. You need an odd number when you're making these open holes because what you generally do is do open on one, three, five, seven, all the way around to the last one, open on 49. And all that is, is a double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet and keep on going. Chain one, skip one, double crochet, chain one, skip one. You need an odd number of stitches on either side to do it, plus one more for the middle. So I was backwards. You need to have even on both sides, 50 stitches or 100 and, you know, you could do 120 with 60 on either. It depends how big of a neck you want. Now I have to tell you, I did not like how small I made this. It was on a person, it's way up at the neck. And with a poncho, you usually want a little bit of leeway. And I don't remember how many I did right around 100. So maybe something like 120 would be a good choice for a neck. Go and check a bunch of ponchos and see what number of stitches they say to start with. This one definitely was more, and I wish it had been less. But if you just want to do it very plain with something open, that's all it is. Just whenever you feel like it, do a row of lace. It has uh, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in the center um, point. That's all it is. So I thought I would mention it if a few more wanted to know how it's made. This is more, but you know you can find poncho patterns galore on the internet. Okay. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, this is something I liked. I saw online and I just, I had to get it. Now, I'm pretty sure that I saw Nina. Hi, Nina. At Nina's Knots Crochet with this item and I looked at it and I was intrigued. And then I saw Sam at Memphis Makes. She had it and she was demonstrating it and she was showing all the different sizes of balls it would use. So I'm gonna back up. I think you remember me showing you my big Sully, oh, quite a while ago. And I like the big Sully because it has all these open holes here. And I use it mostly when I am working with mini skeins. Mini skeins aren't a very big cake. They're smaller than this. And I can put two in each side, threads coming out, and use the skeins without worrying about them being all over. They're so small, they'd be falling on the floor, even with center pole. And when you've got cats, you don't want them falling all over the place. And if you're changing colors, they're all right there, not getting all twisted up. 
It also allows you to, when you open it, it allows you to take out the tray. There is a tray in the middle. And that's where my mini cakes sit. But it also has, and I just, oh, there it is. <laughs> it has this center spindle that you can put in the middle. I've got only two hands, and this is not going to go. Okay. It also has a center spindle, and I told you, oh, we've lost a piece. Hmm. We've lost the end. I'll have to go looking for it. Anyway, it has this center spindle, and that is great for a ball um, turning. You know, if it's an outside pull, this is great to put the ball on. But... It has its limitations. First of all, the ball can only be a certain size because this is limited in space. Well, if I've lost that piece, I won't be doing much with this, will I? Doesn't matter. This thing that I want to show you is called a wool genie. And I have to tell you, I used it this past week and I absolutely love it. Now, I have something on it right now. It's very small. I'm not going to be able to um, work with the ball because I don't have enough space to back up. I'm going to take this ball off for the moment. Oh, you know what? I'm going to leave it on. It sits in the base. I don't know how it got all wound up here. Okay, there we go. It sits in the base, but when you're using it, you simply lift it, and it has a magnet that holds it. So when I'm crocheting, it's just pulling it off. And this is a center pull cake. I didn't need to do it from the outside, but I have a lot of cakes, even cakes that feel say they have a center pull, uh, I don't always find them good, especially if they are wound really, really tight. You can have yarn barf come out. So what I wanted to do was show you, if I put this far enough back, I might be able to put it in front. Nope. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'll lift it up. What I wanted to show you was that not just that little ball, but it uses large balls. And that was the cool thing from Manfis Makes. She showed every possible ball. Now, mo a ball like this is considered, because it's wound properly, is considered to be a center pull. If you watch Juan the Yarn Attic, he'll show you the different kinds of balls and what's a center pull and what isn't. But this is a good size cake. It would not fit in my Big Sully, and it still works here. But what she did was showed how, um, and here's another one, and this one, I even though it's supposed to be center pull, it's coming apart on the outside. So when I get ready to use it, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it from the outside and use that yarn barf that's already starting without even unwinding it, and it fits. But what I wanted to show you was it works, if you don't watch Sam at Manfa Makes, you haven't seen that. It works for large cakes too. Now she had some from Hobie. I have some from Hobie that are larger, but I have one here just one to show you, and here it is. It's a uh, it's a latte cake. I'm gonna have it on upside down, but it's a latte cake, and you can see latte cakes and mandalas. They're all pretty close to the same size, and there is a number of them. I'm wondering if the weight is a little much for it. No, no, it's working. And there are times, especially with um, mandalas, mandalas, sometimes I want to use it from the outside, not the inside. So this is going to work. Well, I have to tell you, I was using it this week, um, and I forget what I was using. Oh, yes, um, this, this here 
which is a scarfy light. I, it had a mess in the center. So I did use it from the outside and I absolutely loved it. And now it's a much longer, um, a much longer ball than some. So I just wanted to tell you about this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm, these are hard to find. I don't know about in the U.S., but the one place I could find it in Canada was horribly expensive. I can't even remember. I just knew I was flabbergasted. So I kept looking, and I actually found it in Etsy. Um, now, mind you, it came from overseas. I'm thinking Germany, and it was probably $20 to ship it to me. So that added to the cost. But this was well worth the money I put into it. Even with shipping, it was cheaper than the one that I found that was a horrible price. So it comes it comes in pieces. You simply have to snap this into the base. And it has a, a loose piece that fits in the base um, with a hole so that this, you put this together, it fits in there. And there it is when you're not using it. And when you're using it, you simply lift it. And there's a magnet there and there. And it works wonderful. It's called a wool genie. And thank you, Lynanne, for mentioning it. And to Sam for showing how well it works with all different sizes of balls. So I know not all of you see them. So I thought I would show it to you because I loved it. And I will put a link to the um, Etsy, uh, Etsy seller in my description box below. So now we come to the part I know that you enjoy seeing, and that is what yarn did I get this week? Well, first of all, I told you I would be getting another yarn advent calendar, and I did. I got my yarn from Borealis, and I'm going to bring it up real close. You can see Borealis Fibers. Somewhere out west, I cannot remember. I have to guess Alberta. There are so many um, yarn dyers out west in Alberta, particularly, and quite a few in British Columbia. Alberta and Ontario, though, seem to be the two largest for hand dyeing. And it came in this box, and it's not the best box you can see. It was kind of crushed when it got here, but it was well wrapped. And Inside, we get all of the it's little envelopes, paper envelopes, polka dotted with the numbers on them. And the one thing I remember and why I ordered this one is that there's their information. If you want to take a screenshot and look them up. And on the back, it tells me the yarn. And uh, all of these are sparkle. Like last year, I had to get one that was sparkly for the holidays. Okay, so I have a couple of acquisitions. I want to do this quickly. I, uh, I got my Arkansas Sock uh, monthly subscription. And I'm going to tell you that... That goes with that. I'm going to tell you that... I meant for this to be my last one, but I was a little too slow in notifying them. So I will be getting the December one, and that'll be the end of Arkansas Sock. Not because they aren't a good company, they're a great company, and their yarn is great as well. But this sock subscription has gotten even more expensive because this time, first time, I got it for 11 months, and this time, the 11th month, Customs stopped it and tapped on another $21 and change. So this is getting far too expensive. And it's not so expensive because the yarn's expensive. It's a little bit, but you're getting a subscription. And the shipping isn't out of the way either. What's out of the way is Customs putting on an extra $20 and the exchange rate being 43%. Uh, might be a little less from day to day. Um, 
Customs actually said it was 38% when they tacked on the taxes. But any way you look at it, these two skeins of yarn are far too expensive. And part of that is that I don't use most of what they put in this package. So I'm going to show you. It's called Give Yourself Grace. That's what this month is about. Um, it came with one thing I really liked and I will use, and that is a hand cream. And this hand cream is unscented and it uses ingredients such as water, coconut oil, sunflower oil, extra virgin olive oil. So that I will keep by my chair and I will use unscented. But the rest, I can smell it here. I got this peppermint patty. It smells of peppermint and it is soap. I won't ever use this. This will end up going out. Then I got, once again, now it's a Christmas chocolate mint like the cookie oolong tea and loose tea. I don't drink tea at all, and I have a girlfriend that drinks tea, but she says she doesn't even like loose tea. She finds it a mess to deal with. So I probably have three or four of these around somewhere now. I may have given a couple away. If you like loose tea, you know, let me know. Maybe I'll someday I'll send it to you. I uh, also got this. Um, it's got moisture in there, and apparently it's sparkle, and it's called Crystal Collagen Gold Powder Eye Mask. Apparently, you're supposed to put it under your eyes, particularly if you're going to sleep or have a rest, and it's, I guess, does great things for your skin. I don't use those kinds of things. And finally... Yes, we got our usual stitch markers, and there's the non-Arkansas one. Can you see it? Um, there it is. There's the stitch marker. And I, I mean, I will add that to my stitch marker collection. That's, that's a nice stitch marker. Plus, this color for Arkansas. We get one of those every month. Uh, after a while, you don't need any more of those either. So, the color of the yarn is called Give Yourself Grace. And once again, it's a lovely yarn. I have two of them. It is Merino Nylon 8515. There are 437 yards. This is called Yummy Plush. And it is, it is very, very nice. And a nice color different from what we've had in the past because we did get a lot of white ones with colorful splashes. This is quite pretty. I'm thinking the next one I get in December may have something Christmassy about it, like red and green, but this is very nice. And I have two of them, so I can make a very nice shawl out of the two of them. I do like it. Or I can find a color like maybe gray to go with it and put a border on it. So this is nice yarn. No complaints about the company or their yarn. I just am not enjoying the rest of the subscription, which we pay for all those extras. I'm not enjoying them, and I'm not enjoying the fact that I don't even want to tell you how much this is costing me per skein, given the exchange and, and then the duty and all the rest of it. So that's Arkansas. Now, I made two other purchases. I'm only going to show you one of them. I made two other purchases from Canadian Dyers because they were having a sale. And the first one is called Full Moon. I'm trying to remember where they're located. Hamilton? Oh, I wish. I wish they put where they are. Yeah, no, they're in Barrie. And Barrie is northern Ontario hand-dyed by um, Jessica and Allison. And they gave me a little stitch marker along with these, I think knitters use those. And I can take it off of that and make use of that one. 
So here's what I got. Started with um, minis. Like you think I won't get enough minis at Christmas, but I just saw minis that I like and I could picture making something out of them. So they are 100% Highland wool. And I wanted to see how this felt. So here is the Kate. Uh, there are six of them. Oh, it opens at the bottom. Uh, they are each 91 yards. So I have a total of 546 yards, which I didn't think would be enough. So I bought two to make sure I got a good size shawl. Uh, I opened it. I find out it opened at the other end, but I opened this end to feel it. Now, this does not feel like merino nylon. It doesn't have that same softness, but it feels fine. It doesn't feel too scratchy to wear. So it is quite nice. And when I do it, I'm not going to do one then the other, unless I come up with a couple of smaller things I want to make. I intend to do both of these, then both of these, and so on in a shawl. That's my thinking at the moment. Then I got a second set of minis. And I had no ideas in mind for this. But you can see that I want to make sure I have bright. I'm telling you, all of these bright colors will be useful next year. And once again, this is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And you can see the colors. I know already that I didn't have this yellow. You know I wouldn't have yellow. And I could use it. I could probably use it in January's picture. So anyhow, I just decided to buy these because I liked all the colors except that yellow. Um, but you know, for yellow, it's not a bad color of yellow. And it will go good with these bright minis that I can use throughout the year. And then finally, also from Full Moon, and they are in Barry, they had some mohair and they had some beautiful colors that I wanted to try. So I bought two of this color. I'll tell you why in a minute. It is 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. There's 459 yards, and this is only 50 grams because it is so late, light, and it's called Pick Your Poison. I love this color, and I'm almost sure that I might have um, a fingering weight in a color close to this. If I don't, then I will. I want to use this one strand. I could put a strand of both together. I might do that and do an attempt at two strands together. You know I'm doing one and one strand right now that I'm going to finish, hopefully before the end of the year. Um, I might try two strands together and this would give me enough to make something. But my real thinking was to put this with a fingering weight, something that had this color in it, or I might just pick um, a very neutral gray and put this as one strand with the gray to give it the color. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I got another one in this color. And of course you can see why I love that color. And this color is called Cosmos. So uh, I really want to be using some more mohair with the things that I make. And if I get any good at sweater making, and we'll talk about that later. I would like to use a strand of this with whatever base for some sweaters. It would make a really, really nice sweater. So that's the yarn from Full Moon Fibers. I will link them in the description box below. Not the same tone. I will link them in the description box below. They are in Ontario and 
um, there is the information right now. Definitely, you know, for Americans right now, with our exchange rate being so high, you might find it really, really worthwhile to be purchasing Canadian. Because when you look at uh, something like this in the U.S., it's $30, $32, and you buy it Canadian for the same price, $32, $33, but the Canadian, when the exchange goes backwards, is, I don't know, like, $25, $24 for you. I don't know the direction when it goes backwards. I just know what I pay going in my direction. It's different in the two directions, but really worth looking at. Now, next week, I will show you another order of yarn, and that should pretty much end it. Uh, and this came from out west. I mean, I don't even remember the name on it right now, but I'll show you it next week, another acquisition acquisition of yarn and then we're going to be just about ready to be doing our advent calendars so i hope all of that jibber jabber all over the place different topics was of some interest to you i hope you learned something about a few of the things that i showed you and told you and i look forward to seeing you all next week and until then happy hooking